Welcome back. In this video we'll be building an AND gate circuit that's centered around the functionality of two NPN transistors. Recall that the input-output table or true table associated with an AND gate reads as follows. Whenever input 1 is low or 0 and input 2 is low or 0, the output should also be 0. That's the state this circuit's currently in. Input 1 is low, input 2 is low, and lo and behold, the output is low. We can look at the second row in the true table, where input 1 is low, input 2 is high, and the true table indicates that the output should be low, and it is. Then we can move down to the third row in the true table, where input 1 is high, input 2 is low, and the output's low. And that's what we have here. And then the final row is the only case in which an AMP gate outputs a high, or a true, if we were talking in terms of true or falses. And that's when its first input's high, and its second input is high, then its output is also high. In all other cases, it emits a low. We can have the first scenario, both inputs are low, the output's low. The second scenario, first input's low, the second output's high, the output's low. The third scenario, the input 1 is high, input 2 is low, and the output's low. Or we can have the final case in which input 1 is high, input 2 is high, and in fact the output is high. Let's look at the schematic and build a circuit. The easiest way to make sense of this schematic and how it serves to emulate the behavior associated with an AND gate is to just start at the top. We'll have our two inputs, which are two momentary buttons, coming off of the bottom left-hand leg of those inputs. We'll have a 1K and an LED to indicate whether this input is in a high or a low state. We'll also have another momentary button with the same setup. Coming off of those two buttons, we'll have the first line coming off, going to an NPN style transistor. The second line will come off and go to an NPN style transistor. And the way to think about it is think about a series circuit where instead of having all of this stuff, just think of if you had a toggle switch here, a wire, and then a toggle switch here going to that LED. And how that would work is if you flip this toggle switch on where you have VCC and, VC, and voltage would have nowhere to go so it, no current would flow. Whereas if you flip this switch on and flip this switch on then you would have a continuous path from VCC all the way through this LED to ground. And that's basically all these momentary buttons are doing is they're turning on each of these transistors and both of them have to be on at the same time in order to create a continuous path from VCC down to our output LED. So if we just push one momentary button, say we push the top one, well that would turn on this transistor but not the one above it. Well then that would just mean that this transistor is on but it has no way to draw voltage and current from VCC because this would be just like an open in the circuit. Likewise, if you just push this momentary button and leave this one open, then you would have VCC going down, turning on this transistor, but it has no way to get back to ground, so current doesn't flow. But in fact, there's a, a stipulation to that, or a qualification is a better way to say it, that when we push this momentary button and we turn on this transistor, Current does flow from VCC through the transistor through this 1K over to ground. And one might wonder, what's the purpose of this 1K? Why do we need it? Couldn't we be, do everything in this circuit without this 1K? Well, this particular way of building an AND gate is not ideal. You can build a better AND gate with two NPN style transistors with a PNP transistor hanging out there. And if folks are interested in that, I can make a video, we can walk through that as well. But if you use this setup, which is standard in many textbooks, you end up with some leakage current and voltage. And that's what this 1K is doing, is it's drawing away any of the leakage 
Right? Transistors leak current, even if it's just a little bit. Sometimes that's enough when combined with the transistor being turned on to light or barely light this LED when just one of the buttons is pressed. So the purpose of that 1K is to eliminate that phenomenon, to cut out any leakage, basically to pull down the connection between the two transistors so that we only have this LED, the output LED, coming on when we want it in no other cases. That's all there is to it, so let's build the circuit. At this point, I've just connected the left and right power and ground rails of the spreadboard and connected the upper half of the breadboard to the lower half, as well as I've added two momentary buttons into the board and two NPN transistors. Looking at our schematic, the very first thing we need to do is connect the upper right-hand corner of both of our momentary buttons to VCC, as well as on the left -hand, bottom left-hand leg of each of these momentary buttons, we need to have a 1K to an LED with the cathode side of that LED pointed to ground. We need to do the same thing on the second momentary button. Connect the upper right-hand corner of our momentary button to VCC. Connect the upper right-hand corner of our second momentary button to VCC with a piece of wire. Next, we can take a 1K resistor, come off the bottom left-hand leg of our, momentary, of our upper momentary button, connect that resistor like that. We can add an LED with the cathode side pointed to the ground rail, connecting the anode in the same row as the leg of this 1K. Like that. Repeat the same procedure with the second momentary button. When it's finished, it should look like that. We just finished both of our inputs for the circuit. Now we need to run also off of the bottom left-hand corner of each of our momentary buttons. We need to have a 10K and then a wire down to the base. 10K and a wire down to the base of the transistors. 10K. One leg of that resistor is in the same row as the bottom left hand corner of the momentary button and the 10K going down. We can do the same thing for the second momentary button. Have our 10K going down. Then we need to add two pieces of wire. We'll have a piece of wire from this 10K the leg of the resistor is at this row in the breadboard. We have the wire in that same row running down to the base of this second transistor. Or the same row as the base of this transistor right there. We can add a second piece of wire from this 10K to the base of this transistor. So we have our top button, our 1K going to our LED, 10K with a piece of wire running all the way down to the base of this transistor. Then we have our second button with the 1K to the LED and then 10K through a piece of wire to the base of this transistor or the row that the base of the transistor is in. Just like that. Now we can connect VCC to the collector of our first transistor. Note that I'm using 2N2222 NPN transistors. You could just as well use 2N3904s or BC547s, etc. The value isn't crucial to build this sort of circuit. Just any small NPN style transistor should work. You just need to make sure you have the transistors properly oriented where you have your collector receiving VCC and your emitter going down to your second transistor. So we have our collector, we'll need a wire from VCC to the collector, then we'll need a piece of wire connecting the emitter of the top transistor to the collector of the second transistor. Let's add that. We have our collector of our top transistor is in this row of the breadboard. We need a wire from here to VCC. 
like that, VCC to the collector of our first transistor. Then we need a piece of wire connecting the emitter of this first transistor to the collector of the second transistor. This is creating the series circuit. So there's the emitter of the top transistor. There's the collector of the bottom transistor. We need a piece of wire to bridge the gap between those two. Okay, we now have a path between the emitter of the first transistor to the collector of the second transistor via that piece of wire. Now we need to add this 1K pull down to the emitter of that first transistor. This will keep the output LED so that it will only come on when we want it to come on, when both buttons are pressed. Otherwise, if you don't put this 1K to ground, that when you push the upper button, there will be a little leakage current come through to your output LED. But if you put this 1K, it will eliminate that problem. So we need to put that in. Here's our 1K. And here is the emitter, the row of the emitter for the first transistor. We need to put the 1K here to the ground rail. Just like that. We've reached the end of our circuit and we'll need from the emitter of the second transistor we need to come off with a 330 ohm resistor to our output LED with the cathode side of that LED pointed to ground. You could use a higher value resistor and you'd be fine. After adding in this 330 ohm resistor to the LED to ground we'll also need to on the same path add in 10K to ground. We'll take a piece of wire so we can spread everything out so it's easier to see. We just added a piece of wire in the same row as the emitter of that second transistor. Then we need our 330 ohm resistor. One leg of it connected in the line coming from the emitter over and we add in our output LED with the cathode pointed toward ground. Short legs cathode, long legs the anode. So we'd orient it with the short leg and the ground row. The long leg is in the same row as this leg of the resistor. To finish up, we just need a 10K pull down resistor. In the same row as this wire off of the emitter and the same row as the leg of this 330 ohm resistor. If we've done everything right, we should be able to power up the circuit and still have the behavior associated with an AND gate. Add power to the circuit. And the first row of an AND gate's true table says that when both inputs are low, the output should be low. And it is. It says that when the first input's high, the second output's low, the output should be low. That's the state we have. The third row in an AND gauge true table is input 1 is low, input 2 is high, the output's still low, and then when both inputs are high, the output should be high. And it is. So we've successfully made an AND gate circuit that centers on the behavior or the functionality of two NPN style transistors. I hope this video has been helpful. If so, please consider clicking like. And also consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you.